let's come back to this problem that we left you with. Uh, we have a wavelet that's generated by the source. It propagates down through the subsurface. Uh, it's transmitted through this boundary between layers 1 and 2 and is reflected off this boundary between layers 2 and 3. And we have the densities and the velocities uh, given in this, in this problem. And you had to calculate the pressure at points B, C, and D, and the particle velocity at points B, C, and D along the wave path. Wave path. The pressure at A and the velocity at A are arbitrarily set to 1 just to make it uh, make it easy, make it simple. And uh, so how did you do? What did you come up with? In um, your calculations, we earlier we went through the development of some basic relationships. We know that as we go from A to B, uh, the amplitude at B will be the amplitude at the source. We're, we are assuming uh, plane waves, no uh, no absorption. So the amplitude uh, at point B is going to be the amplitude at the source times the transmission coefficient uh, between layers 1 and 2 for pressure and times the transmission coefficient between layers 1 and 2 for particle velocity. At point C the pressure wave is reflected from this second interface. So we have uh, a product of terms here, A sub S, T sub P1, 2 times R sub P2, 3. This would be the pressure wave reflection coefficient between layers 2 and 3. And the same for the amplitude at point C for the particle velocity, just A sub S times T sub V1, 2, R sub V2, 3. And when we get to point D, we have an additional transmission, and I've just paired them together here. So we have A sub S, T sub P1, 2, T sub P2, 1. We're going back through this layer in the opposite direction. And this is the amplitude of the reflection off of the interface between layers 2 and 3, just the reflection coefficient. And of course, the same set of terms for the particle velocity. And we can express this in terms of the P wave reflection coefficient, as we noted, so that the amplitudes at B, C, and D uh, can be co computed just from a knowledge of the reflection coefficient, the pressure wave reflection coefficient. So um, that makes our calculation simple, because all we have to do is calculate R sub P1, 2, and R sub P2, 3, and then we can calculate these various terms, the amplitudes at B, C, and D uh, along the uh, ray path uh, down and back to the surface. So here we're just using the R sub P terms and uh, we have 1 plus R sub P 1, 2 for the transmission coefficient for pressure. We have 1 minus R sub P 1, 2 for the transmission coefficient for particle velocity, and so forth. So going through the calculations, we have the pressure, uh, the amplitude of the pressure wave at point B is going to be 1 times 1.5, or 1.5. At C, we have 1.5 times the reflection coefficient, which is 0.25. So we get 0.375 as the amplitude of the pressure wave at point C. And then carrying on with the computations, we have the product of the two transmission coefficients, one going down, the other going back up. 1, 1 plus, 1, 1 minus. So we have 1.5 times 0.5 times the reflection coefficient, 0.25, gives us a 0.1875. Now for the velocities, uh, the particle velocities, we have the particle velocity at C and the particle velocity at D. You'll notice that we have a sign change because we have this uh, 
sign change in the reflection coefficient. Um, the reflection coefficient for velocity is negative that of the reflection coefficient for pressure. So we have a reflection coefficient for pressure of 0.25. Uh, we have a minus 0.25 down here. And we end up with the same product of uh, transmission coefficients. So this number differs. We have a negative 0.125 and a 0.375 here. But the pressure as we get to the surface, the particle velocity is the negative of the pressure because of the side change here in the reflection coefficient. So looking at these graphically, uh, we have the pressure of the initial disturbance, the downgoing disturbance at A. So we have this, this is our wavelet. And we know just from the definition of the transmission coefficient that it's going to increase because we have a positive reflection coefficient here. The transmission coefficient becomes 1.5 and so the amplitude of the wavelet at uh, B is actually larger than it is at A. But now that's accompanied over here by, remember we've got this, uh, we're looking at the energy and the energy in the downgoing uh, wave field is the product of the pressure and the particle velocity. So uh, basically 1.5 times 0.5 or 0.75. So we have had an energy reduction as we go through this interface. We see that the particle, we see that the pressures are all positive at C and D. They get uh, increasingly smaller as they're influenced by the transmission losses across this boundary. And we have the negative uh, particle velocities at C and D as we just calculated. So, so you, you should be noticing that we did have a significant loss in amplitude as we return to the surface at point D. So we've ignored things like uh, spherical divergence and absorption and we're just looking at transmission losses here and partial reflection. So the amplitude of the source has been diminished considerably by the time it gets to back to the surface uh, due to these effects of two-way transmission and partial reflection. So some general relationships here are that uh, on the trip down, you know, we're going down from a source here all the way down to this nth reflector and then back to the surface. On the trip down to the nth reflector, the amplitude of the wavelet reaching the nth reflection is reduced by the product T sub di. And we're changing our notation here. We're using d for down and u for up. And then we're just, our second subscript here is just a reference to the layer number. So we have down through layer one, this layer. We have up through layer one, or actually from layer Two, two, one. the transmission coefficient coming upward into layer 1, and so on. The transmission coefficient going downward in uh, uh, layer n minus 1 and upward in layer n minus 1. And then we're just labeling the reflection coefficients by the uh, layer number. So this would be the n minus 1th layer. This would be the nth layer. And of course we have impedances that we would calculate as we usually do from the densities and the velocities. So we've simplified our notation. Uh, again, just as a reference here, the se second subscript refers to the boundary number, um, where 1 would be the boundary between layers 1 and 2. R1 then is just the reflection coefficient from the boundary between layers 1 and 2. So the reflection from R sub n down here for the wave that goes all the way down and then starts to come back up through this um, nth layer is going to be, we're going to have all these factors which are going to reduce the amplitude of this reflection as it comes back to the surface. So we'll have a product of T sub D1 times T sub D2 times so on, T sub D and minus 1 will be giving you the proportion of R sub n, the 
partially reflected uh, wave front back to the surface. So we could also express that using this pi notation here where we have i equal 1 to n minus 1, t sub di, uh, where we're summing over i, times r sub n, this reflection coefficient. So the amplitude of the wavelet returned to the surface from the nth uh, reflection event will include the down Transmis downward uh, transmission coefficients as well as the upward transmission coefficients. So we've got the reflection coefficient here in the middle. We have a series of products here, t sub d1, t sub d2, t sub dn mi minus 1. And on this side we have the upward transmission coefficients, uh, t sub un minus 1 uh, up to t sub u2 times t sub u1. So we can just pair these into t sub d1 t sub u1, t sub d2, t sub u2. All these uh, paired two-way transmission losses uh, are factors on the partially reflected wavefront that comes back up from uh, uh, the base of layer n. Now we know that we can express this product of transmission coefficients as 1 plus r1 times 1 minus r1, or 1 minus r1 squared, so that the above relationships, then we just have a series of products. These t sub d1, t sub u1 becomes 1 minus r1 squared. t sub d2, t sub u2 becomes 1 minus r2 squared, and so on. So in the end, uh, the partially reflected pressure wave that comes back to the surface, its amplitude is further reduced by the two-way transmission losses in this product of terms here, where the two-way transmission losses are expressed in terms of the reflection coefficient, and we just have 1 minus r sub i squared times r sub n uh, over this uh, series of products. And of course the uh, sine of the velocities depends on the sine of the reflection coefficient between layers n and n plus 1. So. so here's another problem to consider. We've been dealing with this uh, simplified case for increasing positive reflection coefficient. Now we're introducing a negative reflection coefficient. So we're going from 4600 meters per second to 5800 meters per second. We're dropping, we're increasing in density. 2600 to 2650. So we have a positive reflection coefficient here, but we have a negative reflection coefficient as we go from 5800 back down to 4600 meters per second. And 2650 kilograms per cubic meter back down to 2600 kilograms per cubic meter. So what you might try to do, uh, if you have some time, would be to repeat the earlier problem using the velocities and densities uh, given over here, and note how the sign of the velocities change for the upward reflected wave from this second interface. So the velocity reflection coefficient is now positive, and in our initial discussions, um, as the initial discussions were set up uh, in an up and down framework, the net particle displacement was upward in the direction of wave propagation the net particle displacements produce a wave that propagates upward in the negative direction, regardless of the initial particle displacements. So think about this uh, as you work through this problem. Think about how the signs change from what we've been talking about. Uh, instead of having, um, you know, the um, coming back up here, instead of having these negative velocities, uh, what are you going to get in this case? So take a few minutes, work over this, and uh, hope to uh, thanks for joining us and hope to see you next time.